You personally were the inspirer for our project on political culture five years ago. Back then, you described the situation in the country with the following words. Here we have this abusive power, which reflects the approach how to share the spoils of power with one's friends and party foot soldiers, not how to ensure that the power that is exercised is the one to bring benefit to all the citizens, irrespective of their political affiliation. What is your assessment of the Macedonian situation now? Well, the situation has unfortunately got far worse. Uh, and if you look at the developments at every sector of the society, whether it is at the political level, whether it is in the economic level, the cultural level, educational level, these have all been taken over by the apparatus of a ruling party which uh, sole interest is to um, usurp the lawful authority of the state uh, and to impose its own very narrow party ideology. And uh, we saw the roots of that already, uh, after, particularly after 2008, I think. Um, this sort of ethno-nationalist bent in their uh, behavior. But it, we didn't realize, certainly I didn't realize, that it would have got so bad uh, that really they would have not stopped at anything to control and to use their authority uh, in uh, manipulating the entire system uh, and also abusing of the interests of the citizens of the country for their own personal gain. They, they see the country as their own personal property, the ruling party. Uh, and so, uh, at every level, unfortunately, uh, the, the poison that has been sown has gone down very, very deep. Many people who, who were able to have left the country because they see no future, particularly the younger generation. Uh, and it's only by uh, cheating that they have uh, reached where they are now, and that's why they want elections, because they know that by cheating again, they will, they will win, uh, controlling, intimidating. So um, I also feel that uh, the international community should have been much stronger, uh, particularly after the violence on the 24th of December 2012. There should have been a very, very strong message from the European Union in particular, uh, so that uh, they would not repeat such a thing. But unfortunately, there has been a, a weakness uh, there has been a failure to appreciate the depth of the crisis in Macedonia. Uh, and uh, I remember when I wrote my policy paper um, in uh, 2013 for the Centre for European Policy Studies, and I entitled it Macedonia, a country in crisis. And the people in the EU institutions told me I was exaggerating. Well, I wasn't. I was even underestimating the depth of the crisis. And now we see where we are. And really it requires, and I'm glad that finally the international community does understand uh, the action that is required. You supported the protests of the citizens demanding democracy and justice mm. by being present there for a few days. What would you do next if you were uh, part of uh, the, the organizers and the, the people who are on the streets? Do you think that this regime, the way it is, uh, would peacefully resign and let democracy and the rule of law take place in the country? Or do you see well, some other developments? One has to hope so, uh, that uh, reason will prevail. But of course we know that desperate people can resort to desperate measures. Uh, and uh, the, the strength of the feelings of the people out in the streets is really something that they can no longer ignore. They have tried to. The government support and media, I think, don't even mention it. But uh, they are negating their own the rea reality in the ground uh, by uh, not recognizing that these people, thousands of people, are out in the street every day because they want to be there. They want to demonstrate their total rejection uh, of the ruling party of the way that they have manipulated uh, the resources of the state, of the way they have discriminated against the citizens, marginalized many communities, 
uh, and abused uh, of the confidence uh, of the citizens. So, uh, and this has been going on now for three weeks, uh, so I admire the people and I felt it was important that I should come out and show them that we and many others of the Friends of Macedonia support uh, these people. And I, I hope that this will make the, the government, the ruling party, realize that they have to uh, compromise, they have to step down, and they have to uh, also face the full force of the law, and that's why the special prosecutor's role is so important. So I believe that now, with the increased international pressure, this will uh, show the ruling party that uh, they have to move. They cannot stay like that. And of course, by supporting the protests, uh, you became part of the dark forces, foreign spies, traitors, uh, and all sorts of uh, attributes that uh, we all f uh, are, are bearing for a number of years nowadays. It's very sad to see that, that uh, the friends of Macedonia who are here to help, uh, and I, I used to say that to the Prime Minister often, I said uh, my criticism of the performance of the ruling party is uh, not uh, as an enemy but as a friend. I want to show that it is important as a candidate country, Macedonia has a responsibility to follow the basic democratic standards that is accepted of it. But of course they dismissed all of that uh, and the president's when the president launched his pardon uh, of all these uh, senior officials, he mentioned uh, the fact that he was critical of the so-called interference of uh, diplomats. Uh, this shows that the ruling party does not understand the concept of diplomacy. And they see, uh, they, see they look at all of this in, a, in such an arrogant way uh, and they don't realize that uh, they have the whole world is uh, looking at Macedonia as uh, a failed state unfortunately. Well uh, do you think that uh, we should agree on a fixed date for elections? Uh, in, uh, is the demand conditions for uh, free elections first then uh, date for elections feasible? And what if elections get postponed with a fixed date? And uh, what if the elections take place on the 5th of uh, June? We have three questions here. Well, certainly uh, having elections on the 5th of June would only worsen and deepen the crisis. Uh, and I'm very happy that the Netherlands uh, presidency of the European Union um, issued a letter, a very strong letter, making very clear that the conditions are not in place for having uh, free and fair elections. Uh, the Persian agreement uh, that was mediated by the European Union together with the US last year had some important positive elements, but one of the weak elements was the fact that they set a date for the elections which many of us independent experts considered was far too early and that they should rather have said, right, first of all the work has to be done and then decided date. Now we're in a situation where the elections have been postponed already. My feeling is that they have to be postponed again, but they need to be postponed in a different way. And it should be a postponement whereby a date will be set once all the conditions are in place, uh, the media reforms are really in place and functioning, the voters list vetting uh, concluded properly, uh, also uh, ensuring that uh, there is this complete separation between the state funds and the party funds. I mean, we see the former Prime Minister, Mr. Wierski, going around the country opening projects left, right and centre. With what money? Is that government money? Then he shouldn't be doing it. Uh, and so all of this uh, needs to be addressed. Uh, and also the question of intimidation uh, of public administration officials. So these are a lot of measures that need to be in place before credible elections can take place because the whole idea of these early elections in this Persian agreement was that they should signal a new page uh, for Macedonia, a return to democratic standards and to give confidence to the citizens that their vote means something. But to have that 
elec uh, those elections in the current circumstances on the 5th of June would simply not achieve that objective. So the EU needs to be consistent and therefore should now say, put all of that, uh, those measures in place and then you must decide. Thank you. Uh, do, you, do you think there is a potential for violent development of the, of the events in the country? The Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, for instance, and the ruling party, Vomero de Pemene, are often mentioning the, the Ukrainian scenario. How would you comment on this? Uh, is the ruling party actually pushing for violent development in order to get away with, the, with its transgressions? Well, of course, uh, the, what you mentioned, uh, these statements, uh, particularly by the ruling party, is, is fear-mongering. Uh, they are trying to uh, raise fear uh, among the citizens uh, and uh, making suggestions which uh, can only provoke, and maybe this is what they want. Uh, and uh, this is the tragedy of this ruling party, is that they have been promoting violence through their confrontational politics over the years, uh, and we have seen uh, incidents of violence which do not reflect Macedonian society, uh, and this is as a result of the confrontational politics of the ruling party and the way in which they manipulate the people, uh, and yesterday evening uh, was um, the, marking the memory of the murder of this young student, uh, so this is one among many examples of people who have suffered uh, from uh, of uh, uh, violence by this regime. So, but again, uh, one has to hope that the pressure from the international community will be such, and I think it's growing by the day, that uh, any violence scenarios will be uh, uh, prevented, and that uh, the ruling party will will not be allowed to do that. Of course, there is always a danger, mm -hmm. as we saw with the Kumanovo events last year, um, because uh, if there's one thing which unfortunately uh, we have seen uh, in Macedonia is, um, and yet it, it is a wonderful example of the Ocra Framework Agreement shows the inter-ethnic uh, mix of this country and as a unique opportunity to show the possibility of different communities working together. But the ethno-nationalist policies of this ruling party have exacerbated the tensions between the ethnic communities. But I was amazed when I saw last year, after the Kumanovo events, how the entire country was united, rejecting that violence that took place and rejecting those dark forces uh, that I'm sure uh, have links with shady uh, individuals uh, in the margins of, uh, of uh, society who want nothing but ill for the country. And you had all the ethnic communities coming together uh, as a, a force of rejection against the ruling party uh, and its policies. Uh, and I sure that this will be the saviour of Macedonia and hopefully the peaceful solution that will emerge, uh, but it will take quite some time to restore the confidence, to eliminate the fear that uh, is prevalent in the society now, and also to end the divisiveness in the society. But I, I feel very strong in my feel it in mind when, after talking to so many of the people yesterday evening in the protestiram demonstrations, that they have a, a tremendous uh, strength and they're there because they want to be there. Uh, and that is, I think, a strength that the ruling party will never be able to vanquish.